Dear one, I welcome you to another episode of the Everlasting Gospel. Today, too, I entreat you to spare some of your time to reason with me in the Word of God. Today's message is titled, Polygamy, the Christian's Perspective. One property of all living things is that they reproduce after their own kind either sexually or asexually. However, one distinguishing feature between all other living things and human beings is that human beings usually observe marriage ceremonies to attach to their spouses. The question is, who taught human beings to get married? Did it just evolve as some people think? It is evolution that teaches that things happen by chance. But Christianity believes otherwise. Christianity believes that an all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-loving God created human beings in his own image and also created marriage for one man and one woman and everything was perfect. It must be noted that Satan, our arch-enemy has succeeded in negating everything that God made, and people just follow him blindly or religiously. 1. In the beginning, God created all things, however, through evolution, Satan has negated people's mindset about the creatorship of God. 2. In the beginning, God created the Sabbath. However, by instituting a man-made Sabbath, Satan has changed the holy, sanctified Sabbath day of God. 3. In the beginning, God created marriage. However, by promoting other forms of marriage, Satan has polluted the holy, blessed institution of marriage that God created and most of the world is following Satan's patterns religiously. In the Bible, many patriarchs and devoted men of God like Abraham, Jacob, David, and Solomon, had multiple wives. Nonetheless, these men had close, intimate, and personal relationships with God. Even some of them got inspiration from God to write books or some portions of the Holy Bible. Because of that, Some pastors, some leading church members, some Christians, and many non-Christians, believe and argue that polygamy should not be shunned by Christians. They are of the view that God does not abhor polygamy and so the Christian church should endorse it. But, does that school of thought go in line with the teachings of Christ? Beloved, let us not forget that Christ is the founder of Christianity, and all beliefs and practices in Christianity must be ordained by him. In the Bible, from Adam to Matthew, all the people who believed God looked forward to the coming Savior for salvation. Also, people who lived from the time of Christ until today, look backward to the cross for salvation. Christ is the center around which all the faithful ones cluster and derive their joy of salvation. God has used men such as Enoch, Abraham, Moses, Joshua, David, Solomon, and many others in the olden days. But we need not forget that all these people were not founders of Christianity. This, therefore, does not make any of these people the role model for Christians. Christ, only, is the author and finisher of our faith as Christians, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and everything in between, Revelation chapter 22 verse 13. Christ lived among men and taught men the best way of life. He showed men the way to get back to God. He lived a life of example unto us that we, as Christians, must follow his footsteps. The Bible declares that Christ alone lived without sin, he did not sin. Therefore, Christ's life and teachings are the pattern for Christians, not the life of any other human being. Whilst on earth, Christ gave his followers clear-cut instructions on marriage, and also, on divorce when he was asked a question in Matthew chapter 19 verses 3 to 9. The Pharisees also came to him, testing him, and saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then, they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce, and to put her away? He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning, it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, 
commits adultery, and whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. In the words of Christ, in the beginning, he who created human beings created male and female, not males and not females. And that a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, not wives, and the two, not three, not four, shall become one flesh. That is the divine definition of marriage, two people, male and female as God made, becoming one flesh. That is how God made it in the beginning, and Christ maintained that it had not changed. Not one man joining two, three, five, ten, or fifteen women to become one flesh. No, not at all. That is not the institution of God. Not one woman joining to two, three, five, ten, or fifteen men to become one flesh. Not one man joining another man or men to become one flesh. Not one woman joining another woman or women to become one flesh. The explanation of Christ was simple, clear, and without any ambiguity. One man joining one woman and the two becoming one flesh. It does not matter what Abraham, David, or Solomon did. Christ confirmed that God's principle concerning marriage had not changed. What Abraham or David or Solomon did, never changed the divine institution of God. Apostle Paul wrote several letters to his fellow Christians and explained this same principle which he received from Christ. Many Christians confuse the writing of Paul with the teachings of Christ, which shouldn't be. Writing to the Galatians, Paul states categorically that the gospel which he preached to them was received from Christ. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ, Galatians chapter 1 verses 11 to 12. Paul was taught by Jesus Christ himself through revelation, so, Paul did not teach or write anything contrary to the teaching of Christ. What God made in the beginning is the same thing Christ retaught, and that is what Paul preached. If we leave out the teaching of Christ and try to understand the writings of Paul in isolation, we will be confused and misled. Peter admits that the writings of Paul contain things hard to understand and that people twist them to their own destruction. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. But when we lay the teaching of Christ as the foundation of our belief, then the writings of Paul will make a lot of sense. Jesus said, Any man who comes to him, and hears his sayings, and obeys them is like a house that has its foundation laid on the rock. Luke chapter 6 verses 47 to 48. Paul's writing is not and should not be the foundation of Christian belief. Paul himself admits, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11. Therefore, Christ Jesus and his teachings are the foundation of the Christian belief and the teaching of Christ concerning marriage is, one man joining to one woman and the two becoming one flesh. Nothing more, nothing less. Paul's writings become indispensably needful only when it is laid on the foundation, which is Christ's teaching. Coming to the issue of divorce, Christ made it clear that Moses commanded you to give a certificate of divorce because of the hardness of your heart, but it was not so from the beginning. Because of the hardness of your heart, Moses permitted you to divorce your wife, or marry multiple wives, but that was not so from the beginning. That is not how God designed it. Today, because of the hardness of our hearts, we are permitted to become gay, lesbians, bisexuals, transgender, queer, bestialists, etc. But all these were not so from the beginning. The fact that our national laws permit those relationships does not mean God also permits them. The word of God which condemned those acts in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, and in the time of Apostle Paul, is the same word that condemns it today. In Romans chapter 1 verses 26 to 32, the Bible says, For this reason God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind, 
to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same but also approve of those who practice them. This last part is worth repeating. Not only do the same but also approve of those who practice them. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 the Bible says, Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers God will judge. God created marriage for man. He created it in a special way. God did not give man the choice to choose how he wants his marriage to be. No, not at all. God designed marriage for man and he instructs man to obey his commandments. So, let us renew the faith we have in Jesus, believe only God's word, and continue praying for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus invites you to be a partaker of his eternal kingdom. He invites you to alert your family and friends to join his eternal kingdom. Let this gospel reach everyone you know and care about. In bringing today's message to a close, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.